hey, do you remember like a year ago when we released that video about Canon potentially killing the cam link because they released their webcam software that allowed you to connect your camera directly to the PC over USB and then nobody bought cam links anymore? Just kidding, that didn't happen. Everyone still uses the cam link. Canon released their beta software first so people could use their cameras as webcams and then everybody else scrambled to get theirs out right after. But it's been about a year now and it's interesting to see how much better has it gotten. Let's take a look. Real quick, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordPass, and show you something interesting. Take a look at this list here. Do you see your password on this list? Because according to NordPass's research of over 250 million stolen passwords in 2020, that's a quarter of a billion, these were the top 20 most popular passwords. I love you too, number 17. NordPass makes it simple and easy for you to never find your passwords on that list because it manages all of your passwords for you. It stores them in a secure vault that you have access to with a single master password. That way you can use those crazy, long, unguessable passwords on all your online accounts without having to remember what they are. Yeah, kind of like that one. NordPass even takes all the work out of it, makes these passwords for you and automatically stores them. And it'll even let you know if there's ever been a breach of any of your online accounts or even credit card info. Also, it's 70% off right now with NordPass's summer kickoff sale. Plus they give you a free month. So really the takeaway here is if you don't have a password manager yet, it might be the right time for you to sign up for NordPass. Just go to nordpass.com slash alpha gaming link in the description down below or use code alpha gaming at checkout, which by the way, that link does help support the channel. So thank you to everyone who clicked on it. That 70% off sale is available through June 29th. At this point, just about every camera maker has a webcam utility app now. We got Canon, GoPro and Sony here. Panasonic has one, Fujifilm, Nikon, they all have one. But we're gonna be focusing on the three most popular camera makers for streamers. So let's take a look a year later and see much better their webcam utility app has gotten. Which one do you want to start with? Start with Canon. Start with Canon? Yeah. This is my Canon EOS R. We got USB type C on the side. I don't know if it's USB 2 or USB 3. I think it's only USB 2. We got to download this first. Let's see how simple the download process is for this. Is this still in beta? It was in beta a year ago. Hey, official release version 1.1. I wonder if the resolution and the frame rate have gotten any higher. It was about 30 frames per second and like, what was it? 576p or something a year ago. Guys can only run from a bootstrapper. What does that mean? Do I need to extract this first? How about now? Package can only be run from a bootstrapper. What is that? Setup application? Oh, I have to click, cut all that out. Why? Because I had to click the setup one. <laughs> it's installing. I don't care. All right, let's plug this thing in. Add a new video capture device called Canon. Oh, okay, so they haven't they haven't actually upgraded the software at all. They just added more features and more compatibility. But still, I mean, we're probably getting 20 frames per second on this. It looks like 30 with the occasional dropped frame. Just disappointing. Let's blow this up here, full screen in OBS. Not a great experience. Now, the point of these apps, by the way, in their defense, is not to be a permanent solution. The reason that this utility is great is because it allows you an upgrade path. And what I mean by that is in order to use a fancy camera like one of these things on Twitch, for the most part, you're gonna wanna use a capture card, something that can grab full 1080p, 60 FPS coming out of the camera. What an app like this allows you to do is grab the camera first and at least use it until you can save up and get some kind of capture card to grab the full quality. So while the quality is disappointing and it, it's kind of making me a little bit sick. The functionality still serves a purpose, but I'm curious to see if Sony and GoPro have done it any better at all. If you need an example, I have a cam link right there. Yeah, let's do that real quick, actually. I'm sure you can tell just from the video itself, but let's plug this thing in just so you can see the difference in quality between the webcam app and going directly into HDMI. All right, here we go. Side by side. Do you need me to tell you which one is which? I think, I think it's pretty obvious. Take your guesses in the comments down below. Which one of these is the cam link and which one of these is the webcam utility? <laughs> anyway, you get the point. There's definitely a clear quality upgrade there. You got about four times the resolution and you have two to three times the frame rate. But it's nice that the option exists if you wanna grab like an M200 for like $350 on eBay or something and then save up another $130 over the next month or so 
for a cam lens. There's just no reason to be upset about it is the point I'm trying to make. But let's plug in the Sony. Let's see if it's any better. Sony webcam utility. Oh, imaging edge webcam. There we go. Let's use your camera as a high end quality webcam. Here is the list of Sony cameras you can use. That list is massive. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I want to see Nikon and Panasonic and Fujifilm, never. I think there are like three of you that use Fujifilms. They're great cameras. I just know nothing about them. Yeah, the installation on this was much easier than Canon's because they didn't give you three different applications to choose from. It wasn't my fault, is all I'm trying to say. It, it was, definitely it was, was your Canon's fault. fault. It was your fault. I pay you. All right, moment of truth. I've never tried the Sony webcam utility app before. Let's see if it's any good. Restart the PC after installing the application. All right, um, all right, let me stop this recording. I feel like I should have read the rest of the instructions before shutting down the PC. It was probably like five more steps I need to do in order to get it to work. That was the nice thing about the Canon one. Once you download it and install it, it's just good to go. But it's also unusable. It's, it's, it's not great, is what it is. It's a real bummer that they didn't up that over the last year. All right, we gotta adjust some settings on here, it says. So menu, network. Control with smartphone needs to be turned off. PC remote function needs to be turned on. That's probably the big one right there. Method USB, okay. Hey, there we go. Oh, baby, this looks just like the Canon one. We're like 20 FPS. Let's see if there's anything we can do to fix this. I remember there was something in the Canon that we're gonna plug back in after this. There was some setting you could add that made it much smoother. Oh, this is also about the same resolution. I thought it was full 1080p. Why are they all at 576p? That's such a weird random resolution. I think it's in my video. I figured out how to do it. Where is it? Let me look it up. Stop the recording. I'm gonna look up this video real quick. It did. It went through the... Yeah, it is changing the frame rate down to 30 FPS on the camera. Can you edit something together for me, Scott? Can you take a second of footage from the camera. Can we count how many frames this is sending out in one second? So this is with the set to 1080 30. So I'm gonna wave like this. You get one second of footage and count how many unique frames we have. Now let's change it to 1080 60. How many frames are we getting per second here? And then let's do the Sony real quick. All right, this is set to 1080 30 right now. And I remember it looked about the same. All right, I'm gonna wave. How many frames are we getting in one second of footage? Put it on the screen. By the way, do you like how like in order to find information out, I go and reference, like I watch my old videos from a year ago because I've forgotten everything. I'm like, oh yeah, thanks Harris. <laughs> the thing that concerns me most about Sony's is the fact that this, this is their high end camera. Like if I was using their cheapest camera and it was choppy like this, I'd be like, oh, it's just because it's their lowest end camera, but this is, a $3,500 A7S Mark III, and we're getting 12 frames per second, maybe? All right, let's try Let's try the GoPro. Let's see if someone really gets this perfectly right. So GoPro Hero, four black, five black, six black, all the way up to nine black, are capable of being able to do this. The silvers don't work, the whites don't work, only the blacks work. But it looks like it's about 30 FPS, maybe a little bit lower. There's a slight delay. You can see there's a slight delay, right? Maybe a quarter of a second delay. Not anything huge, you'd have to sync your microphone with your voice though, or with your mouth. And even though it's 1080p, it feels very compressed. The image quality isn't great. It's weird how much darker it is on here also. Let's see if I can brighten it up a little bit in the filters and see if it still looks okay. Yeah, super interesting. So this, this does put out a 1080p signal, but it's so heavily compressed. I almost prefer the lower resolution, but uncompressed. Cause like even the spots where, like if you look by the, uh, by like this guy here, where I'm not moving, you can see on the wall, you can see all the compression and the artifacting going on, even when there's no movement. It's almost distracting, but count the frame rate. How many frames do we get? Because the frame rate's not bad on this thing. I'm curious to see how it looks compared to the Canon in terms of how many frames per second we're getting. I think setting the Canon to 30 FPS might be a little bit better than this. It might be the same though. All right, interesting. Uh, most importantly, before we end this, I would like to know how many of you use a camera that's not a Sony, Canon, or a GoPro. How many of you actually use a Lumix 
or a Nikon or something and you'd like to actually have me take a look at that. The fact that I think over the last year only one or two people have come into my chat that use one of those cameras, I have a hard time justifying buying a thousand dollar camera just for that. But if that's you, please let me know and maybe we'll do one in the future. Interestingly though, I think the biggest disappointment is I expected to see a pretty massive improvement over the last year. I, it looks like there is a bottom line that these companies want to put out there just so the option is there, even if it's not good. I would love to see a day when a capture card for using a camera on your stream is unnecessary. I feel like it should be there. We have webcams that can do 1080 60 over USB. Why can't these $3,500 cameras just output a full 1080 60 signal over USB? I don't get it. Uh, Canon is definitely number one on that list. I would put the GoPro in the middle, and then Sony is by far the worst just based off the frame rate alone. It borders unusable. But guys, I hope that was interesting. I hope that helps. If you have any other questions that maybe I missed, feel free to jump into the comments down below and ask me, or jump into my live stream. I stream on YouTube on my personal channel every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. So feel free to subscribe to me over there. I'll put a link in the description down below. Like the video if this helped you at all, of course, and as always, happy streaming.